Hey folks, this is Fernando doing another video for the more survivalists. In this case, it's going to be the problem with preppers. All right. It's uh, based on uh, someone inspired on a, on a letter that I got from uh, one of my readers at uh, themodernsurvivalist.com, uh, uh, to which I replied as well. Uh, the first one, number one, at least for me, is we are not all like-minded people. We are not like-minded individuals, not by a long shot. It's uh, as um, broad of a spectrum as it could possibly be. And this is something that I'm guilty of myself. Many times when I'm writing, I, I you know, we casually toss there like-minded individuals. That, that's a, 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 a self-centered type of mistake because you uh, unconsciously think that everyone reading or watching your videos or reading your books is gonna be a like-minded individual. That's really not true. I mean, uh, people that define themselves uh, as preppers, people that define themselves as survivalists can be absolutely anything. Uh, I've met some a fantastic individuals. You see this in the forums as well. When you participate in a survival prepping forums, you see uh, lots of different people. Some of them are um, nicer than others, so to, so to speak. And then when you meet them face to face, same thing happens. Uh, I honestly say that I've met some wonderful, outstanding individuals, some uh, great people indeed. And then I've met some kind of wacky characters and uh, then down to uh, pretty complicated individuals as well. A very broad spectrum. And you notice this when you uh, read in which people intend to prepare for. Uh, some folks are extremely religious about the, the way they go about things in life, including uh, preparedness. Uh, for them, it's more of a religious thing. Uh, then for others, it's a, more of a, um, a contact with nature situation going on. Uh, for others, uh, I mean, you've got guys that are going to be telling you, and I've seen this myself in videos, in posts online, folks that say, all I need is a gun because I'm going to be going out there and stealing from you guys. So you have guys that maybe to some level consider themselves preppers or survivalists even, maybe to some extent they are because they are going to be trying to survive in their own way. But they're going to be saying, I'm going to be going out there and killing you and stealing from you. All right. So you have the most broad possible spectrum that you could think of. Uh, so we are definitely not all like-minded individuals, not by a long shot. Number two is we can't agree on what to prepare for. All right, that's another big problem. You know, you have all these prepper survivalists, and you ask one guy, and he's telling you, "Yeah, that, that solar flare is going to be hitting us any minute." I'm preparing my my vehicle for EMP. I have my radios. I'm preparing, and and he's focusing just on that while overlooking a ton of our stuff that may be more relevant to his own situation and he doesn't even realizing it. Some of our guys will go uh, nuts on, on peak oil, uh, having all, all this uh, th this information and, and keeping updated with, with peak oil information, what's going on, if, if uh, the behind the scenes politics of oil prices and such, and they obsess only on that. For some folks, it's more of a political thing. It's a, yeah, this Obama is going to be ruining us all. And they just focus only on that. Uh, they don't even have much of, a, uh, of an idea of you know, all the, even though they're focusing on politics, they don't, many times they don't even see the bigger picture of it, you know, of, of the, the real problem behind all these uh, political manipulations and, uh, and uh, economic schemes so as to um, take advantage of people in many cases, and they get lost in, in all this um, Democrat or Republican thing, very common. I see it all the time. If, if there's one thing that you could uh, say is that in general, most people that uh, consider themselves um, survivalists or or preppers in general, uh, again, not always the case because you have some diehard uh, Demo Democrats as well, but most of them you could say are, um, are Republicans, 60% you could say, and they are diehard regarding their uh, political views and they're blinded to what their own um, political affiliation or the, the one they feel more comfortable with is capable of doing which in many t in many cases 
are horrible, horrible things. Um, for whatever it's worth, I don't feel aligned with any <laughs> either one. I, I have, you know, being from Argentina, I don't trust any politician of any kind. You know, I, I do like Ron Paul, which I've said many times, but you know, th th that's as far as I'm going to be going in terms of, of politics. Really distrustful of, of politicians in general. Uh, but yeah, that is definitely one of the things they they cannot agree on, on what to prepare for. And if you cannot agree on, on what you should be preparing for, um, then it's really hard to coordinate anything, you know. If I have a guy that's obsessed with politics, I have another guy that's obsessed with EMPs, I have another guy that's uh, obsessed with Russia invading any minute now, uh, then it's, it's very difficult uh, to cooperate and get something done. Number three is that you can't really trust a prepper. A prepper is just a, uh, a person, I mean, and this is something that was brought up uh, by, by the, uh, the reader that sent me the, his letter. He mentioned being in a, in a reunion where um, you know, one of these get-togethers um, that happens uh, every once in a while uh, through forums, everyone got together. Uh, and, and you can make contacts with, through Facebook and such uh, with preppers, like-minded individuals uh, in your uh, overall area and such. <clears throat> and, and folks all get together and say, okay, let's exchange information. And immediately you say, wait a minute, I, I don't even know you. How am I going to be giving you my personal information when I don't even know you? How could I possibly trust you? And, and that's a great point. I mean, yes, it's true that as time goes by, you uh, you start having more of a relationship, but it goes beyond that. It takes uh, it, it takes years, honestly, to have a, a friend you can really trust. It's it's not about him being a prepper or not, because that means absolutely nothing. As I think I'm making a good point. Uh, so these relationships that many times you see brought up in in survival novels and such about yeah the, the survival group. Uh, that's not happening in real life. In real life, you would be extremely lucky if you have a couple of friends that you can really trust, uh, you know, and that you can trust your life with. And, and at the same time, that they're capable of helping you when needed, when you need them to be there for you, that they're capable of doing that, that they don't have uh, other priorities as well. So first of all, it's about even being willing to actually help you when you need it. Most folks will not do that, and trust me on this because I, I've been the, in this for quite some time, and you know, nine out of ten times people will let you down, and, and that's being extremely uh, positive thinking. In all honesty, you know, <laughs> 99 out of 100 times people maybe will let you down, or you know, one, two, three percent of the people you come across Maybe you can, you can have that kind of relationship in which he can honestly watch your back. In, in general, you have this uh, in the military because of, uh, of the, the close relationship, uh, because of the, uh, the situation that they're involved in. They have that uh, brotherly-like uh, relationship where they're watching one after the other's uh, lies, basically. But that's a very specific uh, situation. It's, it, to, a great extreme, to a great extent, it's pretty artificial. You're grabbing a bunch of uh, young, well-trained individuals and throwing them in a combat area. So yes, that's a, a great way in which these uh, special bonds where you can really trust that our person are likely to happen. Even then, I know of many guys that have a, uh, a, a military history and you know they will tell you that most of the folks that they've served um, as in more than half of them, they just wouldn't trust them uh, really that much. You know, it's, it's just a handful of people that they will end up uh, calling them, them a, a brother and if being folks that they can honestly uh, trust their lives with in, in the civilian world once they're back, all right? And they have the option uh, of choosing so. so. And at the same time, it has to actually be possible for that to happen. Maybe uh, uh, someone that you really trusted back in, in, in during uh, your deployment, he comes back, he gets married, he has a different life, and you know he's not going to be there anymore. Maybe he, he moves overseas, you just don't even know about it. So. This idea that you just contact random preppers in your neighborhood and it's going to be a community of brothers, not very likely. Having said all this, it is true that you have to make an effort. I do it myself. 
and you know you, you talk to your neighbors you you try to be the best uh, neighbor possible you try to be the best friend possible when you're in, in your uh, in your gun club you try to make uh, friends and such when going hunting fishing your activity you try to make those uh, those relationships knowing that they're gonna be taking a long time and knowing that you know even even if they flourish to some extent they're not gonna be that uh, uh, solid uh, iron iron solid uh, a trustworthy type of relationship even to some extent you can try that out and ask for a favor you know if you think that this prepper or this a uh, like-minded individual you met and have been uh, spending some time with uh, is really trustworthy try asking him for something you know even a, a little small favor if it comes through maybe there's uh, something more to that now if he doesn't come through with even the smallest possible favor that you can ask then you know that uh, what you're dealing with. Number four is uh, preppers love camping and homesteading. All right, and what I mean by this is that uh, it's like 90% of the stuff that you see online, uh, in videos, in posts is about camping, bushcrafting, or uh, homesteading. And even though there's nothing really wrong with any of those things, they're all fantastic activities and there's a lot of nice things to learn about it, even important skills that may be indeed life-saving in certain situations, it is not the answer to everything, all right? And you see this, uh, you, you see this a lot. And, you know, I just got fired. I lost uh, my job. Uh, I mean, I lost my job uh, a couple months ago. I'm broke. You talk with your buddy, okay, let's bug out. <laughs> Dude, that's not gonna be helping in any way. I'm telling you, I just lost my job, I'm, I'm broke, I don't have a buck, let's bug out. We can be in the forest in a couple hours, let's, let's hit the road. Yeah, that, that's not really helpful. Or you come back, yeah, just back from the doctor's office, I have cancer, they gave me six months, let's bug out. Yeah, I don't think, that, that sounds great, but I'm not in the mood right now. Yeah, let's bug out right now. And yeah, let, let's start hunting and gathering berries and such because we're gonna be needing that. Yeah, that, that's not really helpful, okay? Your wife just walks in. She's bloody, she's been shot, she's been mugged in the street. You call your friend, let's bug out. Yeah, I cannot bug out right now. I have to take my wife to the hospital, she's been shot. Uh, yeah, let's bug out. No, I have to get, get her to the hospital. She's dying, calling 911. Uh, all right, yeah, well, you go to the hospital and yeah, let, let's get to the bug out location. That's gonna be helping a lot. No, it's not, man. She's shot, she's uh, in critical condition. I have like a, a hundred thousand bucks of, of medical bills to take care of. Yeah, I'm not gonna be helping in any way by bugging out or by getting to the bug out location. Um, yeah, <laughs> you, you see, so, Everything seems to be revolving around bugging out in terms of, um, especially when it comes to, to bugging out, there's also the problem of, uh, for a lot of folks, bugging out is, is not really uh, bugging out, at least not the way that I conceive it, which is getting from one place to the other because you cannot stay in, one pl in that first place anymore, but it's more about going camping and backpacking, which I don't see the, the point of either. I mean, for me, uh, bugging out means going from the first place that you can no longer stay in to another one, which is a, a secondary uh, location, uh, another uh, viable option for you to live in for a period of time. That's what I think of in terms of bugging out, not heading to the nearest national park and go camping, as fun a as that may be. And same thing with, with homesteading. Homesteading has lots of advantages, especially when it comes to you know, growing your own food in terms of uh, providing your own food, which is a, a big bonus. Uh, also, the, the health benefits of doing so, which is much better than the stuff you buy in a supermarket to a great extent. So it has a, its clear advantages, but it's not the final solution to, any, to anything. Okay, um, any of these uh, likely scenarios that happen to people all the time, you're not gonna be fixing those with bugging out uh, to the woods or uh, heading to your bug out location and starting a homestead growing your own food. Those are things that uh, require other, uh, other steps. And finally, most preppers aren't really preppers. <laughs> and what I mean by this is, sorry. Um, 
most uh, folks that define themselves as preppers, and this is uh, a personal appreciation of mine based on a lot of the people that I came across. Again, I've met some fantastic individuals, some great guys, uh, which uh, I'm uh, you know, very happy that, that I've done so. But then you have folks that are just looking to a way of justifying the things that they like doing. Right. You have uh, folks that really like the idea of uh, off-road vehicles. They, they have this huge truck and they go off-roading every, every weekend uh, because they're preparing for bugging out, right? And they spend a ton of money on that. They just focus on that and they say, yeah, because I'm a prepper. And maybe they have a gun, they have some food, but they're not doing anything else besides sticking to their off-road vehicle or some of the other couple things that they like doing. The perfect example of this is guns. You know, preppers in general, again, going back to the like-minded individual uh, problem is, um, yeah, yeah, it's safe to say that most preppers would be in general uh, pretty much in, in favor of guns, and they love guns. In, in fact, many of them are uh, pretty much uh, obsessed with guns. I would put myself in, in that category. Maybe I'm not obsessed, I'm a big fan, I really do enjoy it, uh, but in, in some cases, it's the only thing that they care about. And they go, yeah, because I'm a prepper, you know, and I have uh, 50 guns. And you go, and you have body armor? No, well, why would I need body armor? I, ha I have 50 guns, man. And, okay, uh, do you have any food? I, I have 50 guns. And what about medical insurance? Do you have any, <laughs> or life insurance? Yeah, no, but, but I have my gun. Right, or I have 50 guns. So it's a only, uh, it's basically a way of justifying the things that they like doing. In, in some cases, it's the only thing that they do. In other cases, it's uh, focusing mostly on that and barely touching on other things. In many cases, things are much more important. I mean, and you know this as well as I do, how many folks you see that call themselves preppers, they, you know, do all the videos and such, and the posts and such, and, and you see them and you clearly see that they have a huge uh, weight problem. They're overweight by a huge margin and that's really th something they should be addressing because it's beyond any possible doubt the thing that's gonna be killing them before they're 60, right? It's, uh, odds are uh, obviously against them in, in, the, in, in the field of, of their health situation and they're not addressing it whatsoever. Uh, yeah, but I've got my guns for when the zombies come or when the, the golden horde comes, all right? Um, it, it's really not like that. You have to be uh, balanced and you have to apply a lot of common sense, which is maybe one of the things that's lacking the most in the uh, prepper world, the survivalist world, whatever you like to call it. Uh, is, a, is a prepper someone that likes to be uh, ready for uh, likely disasters and emergencies? Well, in, in that case, maybe I am a prepper as well. And, uh, I like the idea, of the definition of, uh, of survivalism. I think it, it applies nicely to, to my views. I like especially uh, a modern survival approach to things in terms of, um, of, of sticking to realistic e events, especially to current ongoing situations uh, and such. I think that uh, defines me well. But it can be any of those three, you know, depending on, on what you like. But it's very clearly that uh, no matter uh, the way you define yourself, it may be completely different y your, uh, the, the way you go about things uh, from one person to the other. That's uh, beyond any, uh, any doubt. Um, I think that it's important to have a, yeah, definitely a, a common sense approach to things. Uh, if, if, if I have a, um, uh, a certain personal situation, depending on my age, location, the, the likely risk factors that I'm dealing with, all right, um, those are the things I, sh I should be addressing first. And it's a constantly changing and evolving in a scenario. At least the way I see it in terms of what I define as modern survivalism, it's uh, learning to understand your personal circumstances, your personal uh, situation, but also understanding what's happening around you. All right. Uh, I, I was just meeting with with some uh, some folks a uh, couple, uh, you know, actually last weekend, and it was being mentioned about the the. Um, the, the Gulf Stream changing and such. You know, I had l listened something about that, about 
uh, because of the um, uh, North Pole ice melting and the currents changing and, and such. Um, I had learned about it before, heard it, uh, but since I was um, uh, seeing it mentioned again, I went back, did a little bit more research and such. So you have to constantly stay on top of what's going on. Same thing with uh, the situation with, with Russia. Uh, is it likely to be a problem? How, would it, uh, how is it likely to, to go down? What are the, 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 the possible risks, uh, depending on where you are and what's happening? It's about being informed and making uh, reasonable decisions. And if it eventually it comes to making a little bit more of, a, of, of important changes, then having the, the cool head just to decide correctly and not, uh, and not overdo things, not exaggerate in your reactions. And that's at least the way I go about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, at least for me, it's a, a constantly changing uh, situation. There's things that are always a constant, you know, is, such as the, the basics that you always need uh, in terms of, uh, for example, the, the rules of three, that you can't live three minutes without air, three hours of exposure, three days without water, or uh, three uh, weeks without food, right? So, so basically those things you always need no matter what, but then there's a lot of other things uh, in terms of, of your own health, if you're taking care of it, in terms of, of your, your financial situation, if it's, uh, um, if it's wise or not, if it's good or not, uh, in terms of uh, where you are in life as well. I mean, I'm not in the same place right now that I was uh, you know, even five years ago. Five years ago, my life was completely different. Five years ago, my, um, the, the risks that I was dealing with were completely different than the ones that I have now. I mean, absolutely, no question about that. Uh, because of my uh, uh, geographic location, going from uh, Argentina to Ireland is a you know huge change, right? So uh, in Argentina, you were basically at you know the, the risk of being uh, physically hurt because of the level of uh, of violence due to crime. There was a you know very real threat daily. Uh, then the completely unstable financial situation over there, you know, yeah, impossible. I think it's. Uh, second worst inflation in the planet. So all those things really dictated what I had to be focusing on. Then as you grow older, it's, it's changes as well. I'm in my uh, 30s, you know, it's not the same thing as when I'm gonna be in my, hopefully, <laughs> right, in my 50s or in my 60s or hopefully my, my 70s. Those will be different circumstances uh, than the ones that I'm in right now. Right, folks? That's at least the, the way I see it. If you are interested in, of course, my views uh, regarding what uh, modern survivalism is really about, recommending my first book, uh, The Modern Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse, based mostly on my experience in Argentina, which you may find interesting if you uh, agree with some of the stuff that I've said here in this video. And this is going to be it, folks. Uh, remember to subscribe, like the video if you did enjoy it, and share it as well in Facebook and such, which I'm trying to figure out a little bit better. Uh, that's it. Uh, have a great day, and see you on our next video.